So Nick has a nice question, especially on the B part of the question and the C part of the question. There's a, a couple of um, very nice ways of asking you a question to see and to test whether you really understand uh, what it's all about. So have a look at this. It's a nice question. It really tests whether you understand something like dividends, uh, tax calculations, working backwards. And then very important, it's all about journal entries, the first part. And what is very important about this journal entries, if you do not do that in sequence, in that sequence order, probably you would have lost a lot of marks. So you will see that there's a lot of dates that they're throwing around in the question. Make sure that you follow the dates uh, very religiously in sequence order. So NECO Limited was incorporated on 18 June 2008 with a 32 year end and an authorized share capital of 15 million rand consisting of a million ordinary no par value shares, 780,000 8% cumulative redeemable no par value preference shares and 200,000 9% non-cumulative convertible preference shares. During January 2013, the directors offered the following shares for application. Now, the date that they actually make the offer is not a date where we're going to pass any accounting entries because nothing has happened as yet. There's only an offer out. Now, let's see what they wanted to raise by ways of this capital issue. Well, the first thing they want is they wanted to raise um, for, or issue 450,000 ordinary no par value shares at 15 rand each to the public. Okay. Then I wanted to issue 100,000 ordinary shares no par value at 12 rand 50 each to existing shareholders. Guys, why do we call it when a company issues shares to its existing shareholders? That is a rights issue. And what happens with a rights issue? Usually what happens is, is the company gives the, uh, the existing shareholders some kind of sweetener in order to take up more shares in the company. Now, what kind of sweetener can I give you? Only bucks, random cents. So you see that to the public, they issued the shares at 15 rand each. But to the existing shareholders, there was a special price, and they could have taken up, it's exactly the same shares, it's the same ordinary share, but they could have taken it up at 12 rand 50 each. So a little bit of a sweetener added to that. Then they wanted to issue 200,000 8% redeemable no par value preference shares at 5 rand 50 each, and then lastly, they wanted to issue 20,000 10% debentures of 100 rand each. Good. The closing date for the applications was 25 March 2013. The total issue, including the debentures, was underwritten by Lona Bank at a commission of 2% of the issue price. Now, what is the issue price? Well, you have to work out how much capital that they wanted to raise in when they wanted to... Um, offer these shares to the general public and to the existing shareholders. So you will have to work out the total amount of capital that was um, that, that they thought that they're going to raise by doing all these things. And then based on that total amount, you're going to calculate 2% and that 2% will be the underwriters commission, which has to be paid by Lana Bank. The existing shareholders, now that is our greenies there. They actually applied for all the shares offered to them and made payment on the 10th of March. And on that same date, the shares were allotted to them. So the first day that we're going to pass an entry was the 10th of March. We would have allocated 100,000 shares, which was an offer to the existing shareholders at a price of 12 rand 50 a share. So we would have received statement of financial position, 1250,000, and then we would have credited the application and allotment account on ordinary shares for 1250,000 statement of financial position. 
at the same date that they have paid in all the monies, we have also allotted the shares. So therefore, at the same date, we would have taken it out of the application and allotment account for ordinary shares, and we would have created ordinary share capital statement of changes in equity, one to five hundred thousand. Great. The following applications were received from the public. Ordinary shares, 600 shares. We wanted to issue 450,000 shares. Uh, those we already dealt with. The 8% redeemable proof shares, we wanted to raise 200,000, or uh, um, allotted 200,000, but we only received applications for 150,000 shares. The benches, we wanted to issue 20,000 of them, but we only received 1,000 applications for the debentures. Now, luckily, we were underwritten, but now you must remember that the underwriter can only know that there's a shortfall after the date of application has closed. How else is he going to know whether there was a shortfall or not? So the underwriter can never take up his shares at the same date that the applications are, have actually closed. It will always be thereafter. So by 25 March 2013, all the relevant amounts were received. So that is the first date. We have received everything by the 25th. What would we have received? 600,000 at 15 Rand, 150,000 at 5 Rand 50, and 1,000 at 100 Rand. And then on 31 March, the directors decided the following. So that is the next date. A lot of preference shares entered the benches as per the applications. The underwriter is not an applicant. He will just take up if there's a shortfall. So therefore, it's all about the applications that were received. Ordinary shares, remember we received applications for 600,000 shares. We were, were only allowed to allot 450,000 shares. So they say we cannot allot everything and we're going to allot now to the public in the ratio of three shares for every four shares applied for. But out of the accounting perspective, how many shares are we going to allot? Only 450,000 shares. And then all excess monies were paid back on the 1st of April. Now, there would only have been excess monies on the, on the, on the ordinary shares because there we have received 150,000 shares applications too much. So let's have a look what we accumulated for this issue on the 25th of March. It will be the 600,000 times 15 plus the 150,000 times 550 plus the 1,000 at 100 rand each. 600,000 times 50, debit bank, create an application and allotment account for ordinary shares, 9,000. Then the second one, debit bank once more for the 150,000 times 5 rand 50, credit application and allotment account for our PREV shares, 825,000. And then debit bank, now here yeah, I didn't make use of the application and allotment account, I took it directly to the debenture account. It's a long-term liability, but I could have made use of the application and allotment account for debentures as well, and then took that out of that account and then put it into the debenture account. So therefore, that's a thousand of the debentures at 100 rand each. Very, very important. A debenture is not an equity item. It is a long-term liability. Guys, I put it here very, very clearly. That debenture is a long-term liability, therefore statement of financial position. That was the 25th of March. What happened on the 31st of March? There was actually an allotment of the amounts that we have received. And the excess money was only paid back on the 1st of April. So let's do the 31st of March transactions first. Application and allotment account of the ordinary shares. Now, here we are going to allot only the number of shares that we are allowed to allot, i.e. the 450,000. Only the 450,000 we can allot. We cannot allot more than that as ordinary shares. 
and ordinary share capital and our statement of changes in equity. That is where that one is residing, 6750,000. Then for our PREF shares, well, again, we can only allot that applications that we have received up till now, 150,000 we have received, and that is what we're going to allot at this point of time. So 150,000 times 5 rand 50 gives us 825,000, and the credit will go to our proof share capital account. And there I put in red for you a loan account, statement of financial position, not statement of changes in equity, very important. Here again, long-term liability. Right, and the 1st of April, we have decided to pay back the excess money. We have received 600,000 applications for ordinary shares. We could only allot 450,000. So therefore, we're going to repay now the oversubscription of 150,000 ordinary shares at 15 Rand per share. So 150,000 times 15 gives us 2250. We're going to debit the uh, application and allotment account of, of our statement of, of our ordinary shareholders. Um, and you will see that that original amount that we have allocated to the application and allotment account for our ordinary shares with now this 9 million year, that would now be totally eradicated and there is absolutely nothing left. So we're going to debit that account and we're going to credit bank obviously because we're going to repay those applicants their monies for the unsuccessful applications. The next thing that happened is that the underwriter was paid on the 3rd of April and that was also the same day that Lona fulfilled their obligations. So what obligations does Lona Bank have? They, has, they have the obligation to take up the shortfall. So there was a shortfall on the preferences and there was a shortfall on the debentures. Now, the first thing was the underwriter's commission and that is our duty to pay them the underwriter's commission. Now, the first thing that we have to determine is how much money did we want to raise with initially. We offered with the offer that we made. So how much money did we thought we're going to raise? So it will be 450,000 times 15, plus 100,000 times 12 rand 50, plus 200,000 times 5 rand 50, plus 20,000 times 100. And there we've made it. So we wanted to raise 11.1 million rand with this issue. So based on that amount, we have to work out the underwriter's commission, which is 2%. So 2% of 11.1 million equals 222,000 rand, which we have to pay over to the underwriter now. So we're going to debit retained earnings. Why? Because the questions say, um, the company's policy regarding issue costs and underwriter's commission is to utilize distributable reserves as far as possible. So therefore, we're going to um, debit then our retained earnings. Where are we now? Yeah. Retained earnings with a 222,000 rand and credit bank with 222,000 rand. Good. Now, uh, total issue cost amounts to 15,000 rand. We haven't accounted for that. So that will also then be um, paid on the 10th of April. On the 10th of April. So the next one then, on the 10th of April, debit. Our retained earnings 15,000 and credit bank 15,000 rand. And then we have accounted for everything. Here was the applications. Here was some of the applications and the allotments that took place. The underwriters commission. Um, the addition of the shortfall. The shortfall that the underwriter has to take up. Here, I think I didn't do that one. If we go back to the question, when did they take up the shortfall? Also, on the 3rd of April, Lona Bank fulfilled the obligation. So what was the shortfall? It was 50,000 preference shares at 5 rand 50 and 19,000 debentures of, of 100 rand each. So here it is. 
50,000 times 550, I debited bank with the amount received, 275,000. I credited my pre-share capital and I did that directly. Why? Because guys, when they fulfilled their obligations, there was no period of waiting anymore to see how many applications are we going to receive. The date for the, the closure date for the applications has already gone past. So therefore, these shares is going to be allotted to them. So I don't have to make use of an in-between account in order to keep it there until such a date that I'm going to decide who is going to receive the shares. So they are going to receive the shares. Everything has been finalized. This is just the final thing that needs to happen, that the shortfall needs to be taken up by the underwriter. So I take it immediately to our preference share capital account, the 50,000 times 550. And I'm telling you again that this is cumulative, compulsory, redeemable preference shares. Therefore, it is a loan account, a long-term liability. So it will go to the statement of financial position and not, and I repeat, not to the statement of changes in equity. And then uh, the debentures, the same story there. They had to take up 19,000 debentures of 100 rand each. That gives us 1.9 million rand. And the benches is also a long-term liability. So the credit would, it would have been taken to our long-term liabilities of 1.9 million rand. That is then the A part of the question. The B part of the question. If the 8% redeemable pref dividend amounted to 180,000 rand for the year, Calculate how many shares were in issue at the beginning of the year. You may assume that the underwriter's dividend was not pro rata adjusted for April. What are they waffling on about? The underwriter took up, uh, fulfilled the obligations on the 3rd of April. So what they're telling you there is you can work from the 1st of April. But that the full dividend for April was declared. The original share price was 5 rand per share. That original share price for the shares that you have to determine how many shares was in issue at the beginning of the year. Now the total dividend was 180,000 rand. So the total amount that was actually raised with this capital issue was then the 2.2 million, oh, the 200,000 at 5 rand 50 each, it's 1.1 million rand. So if we're going to work out the dividend on 1.1 million rand, that will give us then 1.1 million times 8%, which is the dividend rate, and we've issued it on the 1st of April. So it's April, May, June, it's a total of three months. So the total dividend applicable on the new issue is 22,000 rand. So it means that the difference between the 180,000, the total dividend for the year, and the 22,000, which is applicable to the new issue, must relate to the old shares that were in issue before this year's issue of 1.1 million rand. So the 158,000 constitutes 8% of how much? So I take the 158,000, I divide it by 8%, and that gives me a total capital value of 1975,000 nine as at the beginning of the year. The question says that you can um, assume that those shares were originally issued at 5 Rand per share. So if the value of those shares was 1975,000 nine and the value per share was 5 Rand, it means that we must have issued at the beginning of the year or the shares in issue at the beginning of the year, we put it that way, was um, actually a total of 395,000 shares. So in the beginning of the year, 8% cumulative redeemable shares were 395,000 shares at 5 rand a share, which constitute a total capital amount of 1,975,000 rand. Great. So it's a great way to think or to test whether you can work a little bit backwards as well. And by now you should know that I love to work backwards. 
Now the seed part is all about tax and this is also a nice exercise to test whether you understand what is taxable income and what is accounting profit and how the two interlinked with each other. After the company made the two preliminary tax payments and that is provisional tax payments. So a preliminary tax payment and a provisional tax payment is exactly the same thing. Let me write it to you. Yeah, 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 okay. So tax payments of 755,000 rand collectively, they still owe 50,000 rand in income tax to source at the end of the current financial year. So closing balance 50,000 rand at the end of the year. And that is after they've made a, a provisional tax payments of 755,000 rand. There were no outstanding balances relating to income tax at the end of the prior year. So there was nothing outstanding at the beginning of the current year. The following information was also obtained from the accountant. Depreciation, wear and tear, dividends received, VAT control, traffic fines. Required. Calculate the company's accounting profit before tax for the current financial year. Now, where do we have to start? We know that tax my taxation expense, in other words, equals 28% of my taxable income. So if we can determine our tax expense for the year, we can work back to taxable income. And once we have taxable income, we can work back to our accounting profit before tax. Now, how are we going to derive at our taxable income? What was our tax expense for the year? And guys, for that, we're going to use the old common T account, which can get you out of any trouble in accounting in a jiffy. So never forget the power of a T account. So, no opening balance. There was nothing outstanding at the beginning of the year. We made provisional tax payments to the amount of 755,000 in the current year. So we credited bank and we debited SARS, 750,000. At the end of the year, we still owe 50,000. So we have a closing balance on SARS of 50,000. We bring it over on this side and we bring it down under the line on that side. So that means that our income tax expense for the year going to add the expense for the year equaled 805,000 rand. What is income tax expense? My total commitment for the year. That equals 28% of taxable income. So if I have the tax expense, I can now go along and I can go and determine what is my taxable income. So I take the 805,000, I divide it by 28%, and that gives us taxable income of 2875,000. Then I can go back to the question, I says, well, there are a couple of differences between the accounting profit calculation and the taxable income calculation. The first one is depreciation. We deducted depreciation for accounting purposes, but then when we worked out taxable income, we added it back and then we deducted the wear and tear allowance. So therefore, for this purpose, we're just going to switch it around. We are going to deduct the depreciation once more, like we do in accounting, and we're going to add back the wear and tear allowance. The wear and tear allowance reduced the taxable income, so we have to add it back. And then once we've added it back, we're going to deduct our depreciation expense once more, because that is what we do for accounting purposes. Dividends received. Now, dividends received is an exempt item, so it is not taxable. So what did it do to our taxable income? It reduced our taxable income, but for, for accounting purposes, it increased our accounting profit. So therefore, we have to add it back in order to derive at our accounting profit. It reduced our taxable income, so if we want to take it out, we have to add it back to get back to our accounting profit. 
Then they also told us that during the year, we had um, fines, traffic fines, oh, bad control. Why did they put that in control in? Just to confuse you. And if you've done something with that, you are a very confused person. I would really recommend that you go and sleep right away. Get it over and done with. And tomorrow morning, you kick yourself that you can be that stupid. Right. Traffic fines. What did we do with traffic fines? It's an expense for accounting purposes, but we are not allowed to deduct it for tax purposes. So, therefore, we have to take it out of our taxable income again. And that is exactly what we do with a fine. We treat it as an expense for accounting purposes. So minus 2,500. So now we're back to our accounting profit for the year before tax of 2,882,500. -500. Very good. Testing your skills. Testing whether you understand what tax is all about. Testing whether you know what is provisional tax payments. And that has got absolutely nothing to do with my tax expense. It is also just an item that goes and was posted against the SARS account. So that is something that I pay. It's prepaid tax, guys. Provisional tax is prepaid tax. I've paid something in advance. And that is actually what it's all about.